One of the things I talk about all the time is how do we create that large connected middle value shape that really unifies the scene. It's an easy concept to understand. It's a little more challenging to actually be able to execute this and transfer this idea into your painting process. I'm gonna take a look at this scene and I'm gonna show you how I painted the large connected shape and really help to unify it. The first thing I always recommend to do is to squint. Squint at the scene, squint at your reference photo. What happens when we squint is we are eliminating unnecessary detail in the scene and we're starting to group together the values. Another thing you can do with your reference photo is that you can turn it black and white. Color information can confuse the way that we see values and the way that we see the large shapes of the scene. So you're already taking a step towards simplification, which is fantastic. So here you can see I lay in my first values of the painting, really thinking about the light in this part of the process. All the colors that are in the light, dropping those in now. After my painting has dried, that is when I'm gonna go in and paint this large middle connected unifying shape of the scene. So I'm looking at my reference photo, I'm squinting, and I can automatically see connections between the building here, the under shadow of this building, over into this, into the plane, down onto the ground, from the ground into the shadow, and I wanna paint all of that in a big connected shape. I'm starting at the top left of the paper, and I'm really trying to simplify those buildings in the distance. I know that there are thousands of windows and trees, but I'm really simplifying that background of the painting. If I put too much texture back there, it's really gonna create confusion on my feeling of distance. So I'm minimizing the background. And as I work my way across the painting, and I get to the trees, I can start to see little connections between what's happening back there and what's happening here in the middle ground. So I have a building that goes into that little sign. And you can see over here, I'm adding the middle values that are here on that little building in the distance. This is where I had to make a decision. I decided to darken the shadow of the side of this building a little bit to enable a connection between this building in the background and this building right here. So I go ahead and paint the shadow side of that building. Now you can see I painted the underside of that building right into the shadow side of the wing. And from there, I go into the body of the airplane. The cooler reflection of the sky versus the warmer reflection of the ground, I can go ahead and let those blend with each other right on the paper. And then I went ahead and did the underside shadow of the wing into the body of the plane. And what you'll notice here is I had a choice to make. On the ground, you can see that there was concrete and asphalt. And so when I squint, I can see that this darker part of the ground is about the same value as the shadow underneath the plane. So I wanted to paint those two shapes at the same time and let them connect. And that brings more of a unified feeling to this scene. So here I go ahead and connect the value of the plane straight into this walkway or the ramp onto the plane. I'm not sure what you call that. And now I'm painting the ground and negatively painting around the wing. See, the top of the wing is lighter than the ground, so I'm going to avoid that area and ensure that that is the right value. Right here you can see I'm painting the darker area of the ground right into the shadow. So there's no disconnect between that. I'm just going right into the shadow shape and combining that. And while this is damp, I'm laying in some of the darker parts of the plane to just give it more of a rounded feeling, reinforcing some of the shadow underneath the wing. But let's look right here. So far, I'm, I'm just starting to get into some of the darks and the detail, but already you can start to see the light of the scene is working. And look how unified this feels when I'm painting all of this in one connected shape. Imagine if I had painted every little detail with a small brush, thinking of all the separations back there. Right away, your eye would go to the back of the painting. Now I'm dropping in some of the dark, some of the darker shadow areas under the wing, and some of the shadow sides of the luggage carrier. All those shadow sides, I'm adding in some more value there. Some of the shadows underneath those vehicles. And now you can see the light is really starting to come out once we get those darks in. It's one of the most fun parts of the painting process. And some more shadow side down there on that vehicle. So I've painted that large unifying shape and now I can 
take a look back and find those little bits of details that create the separation and give the painting more of a feel of finish and believability. And the details are really the part of the painting that gets a lot of the credit, but it's that unifying shape that really does all the work. I'm using a little bit of white gouache and I'm going back in and just getting a touch more of those details. I'm putting these finishing touches on the airplane. That little bit of railing and detail really is starting to bring that focal area together. Put a few letters on the sign. And there is a look at the finished painting. So I hope you can see how simplifying and connecting that large connected shape, how it can really unify your painting. This is the way forward. And if you can practice and learn this concept, you're gonna make some big leaps in your painting. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help with these problems. My five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.